Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this evening's performance. My name is Alain Barker. I'm a member of the Bloomington Early Music Festival Board and really thrilled to be introducing this evening's performance and to have you with us, hopefully, for the next seven days, because we have a variety of pretty amazing performances to celebrate all the way through the week. Um, before I get into introducing this evening's presentation, I would like to just mention a few things First of all, to mention that the festival is 26 years old, and it's pretty amazing to think that a group of enterprising young students from the Early Music Institute, as it was known then, uh, started a festival downtown feeling strongly that they wanted to connect more with their community, with the community here in Bloomington. And um, as a result of that, we now have 26 years of extraordinary experiences to be thankful for. So that's the first thing I just wanted to mention. Secondly, this is a really difficult time, a difficult time for so many performing musicians around the country. We're very thankful that they, uh, many of them were willing to present their performances at this year's festival, but also to uh, let them all know that we have them in our hearts. And we hope that sometime soon, we'll all get back together in real halls and enjoy performances in the beautiful spaces that exist around this community and around the world. So um, with that, I'd like to just go ahead and introduce this evening's program. Uh, it's sort of a bit of a throwback program in some ways. Uh, Matteo Ricci, his map and, and music, um, it was first premiered at the Bloomington Early Music Festival in 2009, when then student and now a faculty member of the Historical Performance Institute, Linda Pierce, uh, came up with this project and developed it in, in, in really quite an extraordinary way. Um, this project has had, a, had an amazing life of performances, both here in the United States and in China. Um, and we thought it appropriate um, in some ways that we present this this evening as a representation of creativity, innovation in historical performance. So please help me welcome Linda Pierce. Hi, my name is Linda Pierce um, and I'm the artistic director of the Matteo Ricci, his map and music project that you're about to watch. Um, the project was created in Bloomington, Indiana at the Jacobs School of Music Historic Performance Institute. Um, it was a collaboration between the Bloomington Early Music Festival um, and uh, my group, Sacabuche, that was just fledgling at that time. Uh, I was a, a doctoral student in the program who was just finishing up uh, and uh, Kathy Barbash, an arts organizer, uh, brought um, brought me together with uh, Anne Waltner, a historian who um, does work on Matteo Ricci's map, um, and she's located at the University of Minnesota. Um, yeah, so I think the, the show uh, sort of indicates what can happen in a place like Bloomington uh, with so many resources to draw on, um, so many uh, wonderful musicians, arts organizations, and supporters of creative projects like this one. Enjoy. My collaborator Ann Waltner and I were brought together by a mutual friend, Kathy Barbash. She knew that we were both equally curious and fascinated by Matteo Ricci's map, the depiction of space, and the music and possible narratives that could breathe life into his journey. We chose music that resonates not only with Ricci's life in Italy, but also with his travels and experiences in China. We combined that music with scholarly researched texts, images of the map generously supplied by the James Ford Bell Library at the University of Minnesota, and newly composed musical works by American Chinese composer Huan Ruo. This project creates an interdisciplinary performance that tells a different story than that accomplished by music, words, or images alone. This unique combination of media uses the ephemeral nature of sound to open doors to our audience's minds and hearts in a way that speaks to the complexity of Rishi's experience and to the complexity of the relationships that often result with cultural exchange. The scholarship that grounds every aspect of this work generates a nuanced and multi-layered performance that is unique and special. The collaboration that is essential to our work permeates all aspects of the project and results in uncommon combinations of artists and scholars. 
we collaborate with specialist Chinese instrumentalists, the musicians of the early music ensemble Sakabuche, and a Ming Dynasty specialist historian. We consider ourselves fortunate to have been able to collaborate with the Ricci Institute at the University of San Francisco. Indeed, the generosity of the people working at the Institute and the exchange that took place between our team and the Institute is not something that we commonly encounter. No. Oh.
1571, at the Feast of the Assumption, the 19-year-old Matteo Ricci entered St. Andrew's Quirinale in Rome as a Jesuit novice. He took with him a coat of old cloth, three shirts, three books, and a towel. He recalled those years in a letter written on November 15, 1594. Things from my youth are more vivid in my memory than anything else. The events of my early years in the Society of Jesus return to me most often and are most deeply rooted in my heart, especially the generosity with which you helped me and directed me on the path toward virtue. Those memories remained with me throughout all the years in China. If I had not been able to hold fast to the memory of the things God showed me when he drew me from my parents, then I would have been in even greater peril than I was. In October of 1571, 
the same year Ricci entered the novitiate, an alliance of Europeans led by the Venetians defeated the Ottoman Turks at Lepanto in pitched and bloody battle. October 7th, 1571, dawn, the wind from the east, a fine autumn day. 一位威尼斯官员描述无私, hurling toward each other, the two fleets were quite a terrifying sight. Our men in shining helmets and breastplates, metal shields like mirrors, weapons glittering in the rays of the sun. The polished blades of the swords dazzled men full in the face, even from a distance. And the enemy, they were no less threatening. They struck fear in our hearts. We were amazed and wondered at their golden lanterns and shimmering banners, bedecked with thousands of astonishing colors. So great was the roaring of the cannon at the start of the battle, that it is not possible to imagine or describe it. A mortal storm of shots and arrows flew, and it seemed that the sea was aflame from the flashes and continuous fires, lit by fire trumpets, fire pots, and other weapons. And death came endlessly from the two-handed swords, the scimitars, the iron maces, daggers, axes, swords, and fire weapons. Other men drowned by throwing themselves into the sea, thick and red with blood. I saw the wretched battle site myself. There has never been such a disastrous war in an Islamic land nor in all the seas of the world since Noah created ships. The total reckoning of men lost was more than 20,000. The young Cervantes, who was wounded in the battle, characterized it as the greatest event ever witnessed by ages past, present, and yet to come.
华途中，曾在果阿停留。在一五七八年的一封信中，有人这样描述果阿的繁华景象 ：This is the place for merchants to fill their sacks. This city is at the center of all trade routes. Here come goods from every direction. Here one finds Jews and Gentiles, Moors, Persians, Arabs, Venetians, and even Turks themselves. There is no better place for soldiers because armies are formed here every day. But for those who are lazy or pleasure loving, life is so good here that it would be better for them if it were not quite so good. 成功问及利希泰，希泰大西域人也，到中国十万余里，出航海至南天竺，使之有佛。已走四万余里矣，即抵广州南海，然后知我大明国土，先有尧舜，后有周孔。驻南海肇庆积二十载，凡我国书籍无不读，请先辈与定音事。请凝于四书敬礼者解其大义，又请凝于六经书义者通其解说。今尽能言我此间之言，作此间之文字，行此间之仪礼，是以极标志人也。
，中即玲珑，外即朴实。数十人群聚喧杂，仇对各得，放不得以其间斗之始乱。我所见人，未有其比，非过亢则过产，非路聪明。则太闷闷晦晦者，皆让之矣。但不知到此何为？我已经三度相会，毕竟不知到此何干也。亦其欲以所学，亦无周孔之学，则又太愚，恐非是耳。
强利马窦来到中国时，他随身携带了很多书、几幅地图和两架地琴。他将其中的一幅地图挂在其住所的墙上。The more learned among the Chinese admired the map very much, and when they were told it was a view and a description of the whole world, they became greatly interested in seeing the same thing done in Chinese. The map is full of words. Some tell us about the map itself; others describe the world it portrays. Ricci writes about how he made the map. 共成大平六幅，以为书瞻过游之句。皆皆不出库亭，历观万国，此于文件不无稍补。Li Zhizhao, who worked on the map with Ricci. Summarize the appeal of the map by saying, "Di zhi guo hou ye, er tu zhi chu mo, dun shi wan li na zhi mei jie, fa huang liao lu nong wan." The world is great and thick, but this map is made of paper and ink, and so in a moment you can gaze across ten thousand miles. And the eight expanses become like a toy ball. An influential scholar, Wu Zuohai, adds some details. Li Shan Ren, from Ou Luo Ba, to China, the Shan Hai and Li Quan Fu, extends many miles. And Fang Qi, the one with the map, corresponds to the Old Chinese. 盖齐国人及佛朗西国人皆好远游，时经绝域，则相传而治之，积建年久，稍得其行之大权。The map depicts Europe as peaceful and prosperous. 此欧罗巴洲有三十余国，皆用前王政法。一切异端不从，而独崇奉天主上帝圣教。凡官有三品，其上主兴教化，其次判理俗事，其下专治兵戎。土产五谷五金百果，酒以葡萄汁为之，工皆精巧，天文性理。无不通晓，俗敦实，重古伦，物会甚盛，君臣康复，四时与外国相通，各商游遍天下，去中国八万里，自古不通，今相通，近七十余载。
年渐退，有往无复，促老暗心，莫我数也。何为乎？窄地而引广厦，以有数之日，图无数之谋语。幸或今日一日，急急用之勿失。欲无许明日，明日难保，来日之望，只期于乎？愚者，庆日立于江崖，似其河，而江水。急急流于海，终无节也。年也者，具有游意，莫怪其急非也。吾不怪年之急非，而为悔吾之懈尽。以夫老将军。My springtime years are receding; they are gone and will not come again. Old age silently encroaches; it will not spare even me. Why did I build grand mansions on narrow ground, using my finite days to make endless schemes? At least I have this day; I will use it. And not waste it. Do not count on tomorrow, for tomorrow brings no guarantees. Hopes for tomorrow are they not just lies told to deceive fools? A fool stands day after day on the river bank, waiting for the river to dry. But the waters flow endlessly to the sea. Until the end of time, it will never dry. The years they have light wings; no wonder they fly by so fast. I do not blame the years for quickly flying by. I only regret my own slow progress. Old age is fast upon me; my virtue lags.
have applied myself to the study of Chinese, and I assure your reverence that it is quite another thing from Greek or German. The spoken language has very few syllables, and many sounds may mean more than a thousand different things. There is no difference between them, other than pronouncing one with a tone that is higher or lower than other syllables. This is why, when the Chinese speak among themselves, they often write to make their meaning clear, because the written words do differ from one another. As for the characters, they simply cannot be believed if you have not seen them. On a 1603 edition of a map, a follower named Li Yingzhi wrote, Feng Yingjing, another follower of Ricci's, wrote about the possibility of communicating across cultures also on the 1603 map. 即如中国圣人之教西是故为前文而其所传前方先圣之书无意味之前文乃自交相发明交相秘密为是六合一家心心相印故东见西北不爽耳<音> 